Welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we're gardening here today in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. I have to admit that I am a lazy gardener sometimes. Um, and I mean that sometimes I transplant things from one area of my garden to another, but it takes me days from the time that I dig them up to the time that I plant them. Sometimes weeks, sometimes months. So come along with me and let me show you how lazy I am. We'll see how these plants might do after being so mishandled during the transplant process. Come along with me. I'm well intentioned, but sometimes my follow through lacks a little bit in the consistency area. So it very frequently happens, especially at this time of year in the spring, that I see a plant coming up in an area that I no longer want it there. So I dig it out and I set it aside and I think to myself, oh, I'll put that into the ground later today. But then today doesn't happen. And then it ends up sitting bare roots exposed and all. It's already growing, except I've dug it out of the ground and it's now sitting in a tray or a pot or sometimes even just on the ground with its roots exposed, kind of like maybe starting to die. So, and this happens all the time. Let me show you just a few of the things that I have in this state that need to get into the ground. This is Liriope. I dug this out of the ground more than a month ago. I divided it up and uh, they have been sitting in this tray, um, sometimes getting water, sometimes not, uh, for over a month. Those need to get into the ground. I've got six pots full of um, Nepeta, Walker's Low. I divided up this plant, actually these were two big clumps that I divided up about three weeks ago maybe, maybe four weeks ago, something like that. And uh, at least for these, I did put them into some soil into a pot. So they are less um, mistreated than some of my other transplants, but still they need to get into the ground too. Here is a bucket full of uh, roots of goldenrod. I dug these out a couple of weeks ago and they're just sitting here in this pot. Sometimes I throw water on them. Sometimes they get rain, but um, these could go into the ground and be beautiful, except that they're still in this pot. And here I had in this bucket sitting since uh, Saturday? Today's Thursday. So for five days, sitting in this bucket all clumped together, all of these plants, gladiolus, lilies, and lots of day lilies. So these all need to get into the ground today. So I'm going to get a start on getting these plants into the ground. The ones I have laid out on this tarp are going into the ground today here somewhere in the backyard. I'm not exactly sure where. And then the ones that are down on the driveway, if I have time today, I'll get them in as well. And then if not, I'll do them tomorrow or over the weekend. And I'll bring you along when I do that too. I picked out this area to put in some of the plants. I think I'm gonna put the gladiolus here. I'd like to have some height here. This doesn't get full sun, as you can see. We're in the shade, it's mid-morning. But starting around noon, this gets all afternoon direct sun. So I think it'll be an okay spot for the gladiolus. I'd like to have some height here against the fence. And um, I already have gladiolus down on the bottom end of the yard. So I think this will be a nice place to have some more glads. And I might end up putting some over on the other side of the fence as well, just to kind of, blend the fence into the landscape rather than having it be a strict border around the landscape. So let me see what I can do about getting some glads into this spot. I'm going to do the normal thing of biotone starter fertilizer that helps root development and helps plants grow and mulch and maybe I'll throw in some compost into the digging hole. I'm not sure about that. Um, and uh, water them in. So that's that's the plan. I thought I'd show you what these look like before I put them into the ground. Now, about four years ago, I planted gladiolus corms that look like this. There we go. They look like this. Uh, about four years ago, I planted this corm in the ground in the front yard. And it grew and flowered, and then it keeps coming back every year here in my Zone 7 garden. It does come back. But then over time, it started to multiply. And so these little side pieces right here are the babies off of this mother corm. And you can see they have these little teeny tiny 
acorns on the babies. So I'm gonna just go ahead and plant this all as one clump. These are the roots. Actually, this may be root from a different plant that was near it in the garden. Um, get rid of that. Okay, so anyway, this whole clump is gonna go in as one piece, as one root ball. have these two big ones and two baby ones left and so I think I'm gonna plant these on the other side of the fence over there but I don't want to drag my big bucket full of soil and biotone over there so In the young days of these shrubs, this area could use a little bit of height. And so I think I'm gonna put the, um, the lilies right here. Um, it gets sun from about 11.30 or 12 in the morning until about 4 or 4.30 in the afternoon. And so I think that's enough sun to make these uh, lilies bloom. And it'll give some height and some coverage on this fence in the young days of these shrubs. These lilies, um, I used to have them in the front yard. I planted them about four years ago and they have never bloomed because every year the deer eat the tops of them. So I'm not gonna get a bloom on this one this year either, but I am gonna plant it and I'm gonna put it here in front of this fence. And next year, the shrubs will still be small. And so hopefully this one will bloom next year, maybe. Um, I'll probably put the other lilies nearby as well in the same location. Um, so also, by the way, this is a really wrong way to treat a lily bulb. Don't do this. But if you're like me, sometimes life happens and you have the best intentions and things get away from you. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant this. I don't know if you can see, this is the bulb here. It looks a little bit like an upside down artichoke, actually a right side up artichoke. Um, and then these are the roots. And I'm gonna plant it right up to this crown level. Uh, so the soil will come right up to here. I'm gonna plant it and I'm gonna water it, fertilize it, give it some compost, and keep my fingers crossed that this will survive this summer and then bloom next year. Same with all the other ones. They could help me pick out the spot for the day lilies and they seem mostly uninterested so I guess I'll have to figure it out myself. We have this really large expanse of brand new planting space and I think the day lilies will go in here really at this point any spot is as good as any other. I'm just gonna pick a space and stick them in and see how they do this season. about four or five really good sized clumps of these day lilies. You can see the leaves have already started to yellow and dry off because of their bare root nature, but they will flush back out, I think, with any good luck. Um, so 
I think with five clumps, I'm gonna actually spread them around a little bit, not put them all in one place. If I put them all in one place, I'll just have to divide them pretty soon, maybe next year or the year after. So why not spread them out now and start to fill in the garden? So that's what I'm gonna do, five clumps somewhere. I think I'm actually ending up with six clumps because one of the clumps was super big. Also, one of the six clumps is actually made up of a bunch of small individual plants that I'm gonna just put together. So I've decided to put some randomly scattered throughout both sides of the arbor and that way it'll be a nice little repetition throughout the garden. Also, I'm not really sure if these are the same type of, of daylilies or if there's a mix of varieties in here, I'm not sure. So it'll be a happy surprise when they bloom. When they bloom. I'm not going to say if they bloom because I have faith these are going to bloom. Also, when I'm planting these daylilies, I'm actually, first of all, there's already compost that has been spread under this mulch over here. We did that two weeks ago. Um, so I don't have to add compost to their digging holes, but also I will put some biotone in there. But daylilies are really tough and they actually... Um, they can actually thrive in clay soil like we have. So um, while they will benefit and get nice, uh, nicer maybe, uh, if you do give them good soil, they can withstand bad soil also. So, but they'll just look better if you treat them nicely. So I've already got compost in there. I'll put some biotin in there. And so that's what I'm gonna do. feel zero bit of remorse about digging these guys up before they're ready to be dug up. Yeah, there's going to be a bajillion of them. This guy, you can be a sacrifice to the garden gods. Away you go. by the fence I found this little hosta. Um, this guy has never done well back there so I'm actually gonna put this one in a container, grow it in a container full of nice soil, keep it well cared for this summer and hopefully next year it will be a lovely variegated hosta for the garden. subject of mistreating plants and not taking care of them. Can we talk for a minute about the daffodils that I totally mistreated this year and how well they're doing. Yay. So this is a box of daffodils that I found in my basement in late February and I should have planted them last November or maybe December or even January they would have been okay but late February early March I didn't have any hope that these were going to do anything so I put a bunch of them into containers and I sat them over on the driveway and kept them watered and and uh, just crossed my fingers to hope that they would do something and look they are definitely doing something these are beautiful beautiful little daffodils and uh, I'm really pleased. The entire pot, I think, 
I think most of them are going to put up a flower. Like if we look at this one here, I don't necessarily see a flower bulb on that one, but this one has one coming right here. There may be a few more, like here's one going to bloom soon. So it's not a hundred percent. And actually on the container that's on the other side, I only have, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say that'll bloom five. I think there were something like 25 bulbs in each of these containers. I might have that count. No, 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 not 25. Four, 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 12, 18. There were 18 bulbs in each of these containers. I think I'm going to get five or six blooms out of each one, which I am totally fine with. So what I'm going to do is let them flower and then I'll let the greenery die back, gather all that energy from the sun and then die back. And then I'll take the bulbs out of these containers and I'll plant them into the landscape and they should bloom next year. So again, uh, mistreating plants, I do it all the time. I mean, nobody's a perfect gardener, right? I mean, I don't know anybody, maybe, maybe at a company, like a grower or something, maybe they do a better job there, but I'm sure mistakes happen there too. So if you find that you have things that you've neglected by accident or you just haven't had time to address them plants that you've dug up and then you've set aside and then oh my gosh time passes and there they are my best recommendation to you is if there's any sign of life on them if they're still green at all go ahead and stick them in the ground somewhere put put them out and give them water give them fertilizer and see what they do all you're all you're doing is uh spending a little bit of time maybe a tiny bit of fertilizer um and you know give them a chance and you may be surprised how well they do so uh that's it for me today thank you so much for joining me today let me know in the comments below do you have plants that you've mistreated like me or are you the perfect gardener that we all aspire to be i bet somebody out there is but i don't know anyway thank you so much for joining me today i hope you'll come back and see us again sometime soon here at harmony hills home and garden where we do the best we can just like everybody else so have a great day friends and i'll see you next time Bye bye